Scrooge McDuck is kind of like a character manifestation of the American dream. The idea that all it takes to succeed in this world is dedication, hard work, and honesty. If you want to know what Scrooge McDuck is about, you don't need to look any further than his iconic catchphrase. I'm Scrooge McDuck. I made my name being tougher than the toughies and smarter than the smarties. And don't you forget, he made it square. Tenacity, hard work, quick thinking, and fair play. That's what makes Scrooge, Scrooge. But what would happen if you created a character that embodied the exact opposite of that McDuck creed? Then you'd have a very different kind of billionaire. You'd have Mark Beeks. Ask the average Duck fan to point out Scrooge's dark reflection, and they'll probably introduce you to Flintheart Glumgold, the second richest duck in the world and Scrooge's longtime rival. But Disney XD's DuckTales reboot takes a slightly different approach. Introducing us to a billionaire who's the opposite of Scrooge in almost every possible way. A character who's disingenuous, narcissistic, impatient, and young. An animated parody of the tech world. This is Mark Beeks. As far as antagonists go, Beeks can't really hold a candle to Glumgold. He's not really a villain, but in his debut episode, The Infernal Internship of Mark Beeks, we see that he's a good characteristic foil to Uncle Scrooge. But we don't see it right away. The episode starts out in the Duckburg Billionaires Club, an organization that probably consists of just two people, Scrooge and Glumgold. In fact, the entire clubhouse seems to be divided directly down the middle, split between their two decorating styles. But there may be a new member joining the club. I'm sorry, who are you? Seriously? Mark Beeks? Founder and CEO of Waddle? <laughs> Mark Beeks introduces himself as the hip young entrepreneur who's about to make his first billion dollars. He's savvy, on the cutting edge, hip, and really, really annoying. Remix! <laughs> of Duckburg's riches seem all that impressed with him, but Beeks is a tech celebrity, just the right kind of person to get the attention of Huey and Dewey. You too! I like how much you like me, that show's real smart! Come by the offices and I'll hook you up with a tour! Apparently, Flattery is Beeks' one weakness, and upon Flattery, he invites the boys to intern at his company, Waddles, Duckburg's premier tech firm. This leads us on a whirlwind tour of Silicon Valley parodies. Luxurious offices with free food, desks made out of candy, segways, dance parties, even a slide. Whee! You're doing it wrong. This is supposed to be efficient, not fun. Whee! Beak's tour is a fun little look at what the tech industry is kind of seen as from the outside. I don't know that it's really accurate, but some of my favorite jokes are in this sequence, including this one. Here are the high-impact trampolines, the low-impact trampolines, and of course, the no-impact trampolines. Those are fun. You know, the ground. While the Waddles Tech Company is the focus of the episode, is not the whole episode. We also get to see some time with Glumgold and Scrooge plotting together. Well, it's really more like Scrooge listening to Glumgold's insane plan to embarrass Mark Beeks. The two of them are supposed to be making a plan to get rid of him together, but mostly it's just a bunch of fun moments with the two playing off of each other. It's not actually important to the plot of the episode at all, but it's really enjoyable to see Scrooge and Glumgold together in a more casual setting. It's almost like their rivalry is an old friendship. Though, at the end of the day, it's clear that Scrooge is less invested in this relationship than Glumgold is. I can't believe I wasted the whole day obsessing over someone I don't like. Who am I? You? Oh, I'm gonna go beat you both by actually being a better billionaire. As much as I love seeing Glumgold and Scrooge play off each other, this episode is really about Mark Beeks. The main story focuses on two related subplots. Huey and Dewey's competition to win the single open slot in the Waddles internship program, and the quest of a professional corporate saboteur named Falcon Graves. I really love this character. He's so professional that he introduces himself to Beeks politely, calmly stating that he's there to steal the secrets of Waddle's next big tech innovation. Project Tada. It's everything you think it is and nothing you're expecting. I'll flip you my peep deed so you can follow my updates. I do understand half those words. And what I love about these two plot lines is that they both follow the same format. Each one has two contrasting characters playing off of each other. Huey and Falcon Graves just want to get their jobs done as professionally and quickly as possible. But Dewey and Mark Beeks are mostly interested in just having fun and being seen as cool. In fact, that's largely all we know about Beeks' character for most of the episode. He's vain and obsessed with his appearance on social media. 
And most of the jokes are based on these opposites, and the frustration that the responsible people have constantly losing to the tomfoolery of the more irresponsible Dewey and Beaks. Faked it? Maked it! I didn't even know this was my life's dream until today! This too seems like a joke on Silicon Valley. As someone who spent a good amount of time in his career working in technology, I've seen plenty of startups that are all promise and no action. And that perception is reflected in how the Waddle CEO acts. In fact, it's the entirety of Mark Beeks' character. He spends the entirety of the episode talking up Project Tada, the thing Graves came to his company to steal. But in the end, we learn that Project Tada is a hoax, and that it was Beeks himself who hired Falcon Graves to steal it. Why would you hire me to steal something that doesn't exist? So he gets to say Project Tada was stolen, but he still keeps the money. And this is how we get to see Beeks as Scrooge's foil. Instead of earning his fortune through tenacity, cleverness, and fair play, Mark Beeks earned his millions through cheap tricks, bravado, and lies. And even though Dewey is walking the same path as Beeks for most of this episode, we see him reach a breaking point too. The middle child may want to be popular and trendy, but he also wants to be authentic. You and your whole company are as fake as Project Tada. Maybe, but the money and the buzz are very, very real. Like most episodes, this DuckTales story is filled with great jokes. I love that the Billionaires Club has a kid check for the wealthy to store their children, and Waddles is filled with reminders of how cutthroat the tech industry can be. Yeah, I see you back there, employee demotivation sign. That's... Okay, that's funny, but that's not funny. But what I like about this episode is that despite all those jokes, it has a good, if lightly touched message behind it. And that's that the content of your character matters. Dewey sums it up pretty nicely. Guys like him, guys like me, we have to put on a show and fake it because smart guys like you are so good at making it. Mark Beeks has to be who he is because he's not smart enough to be smarter than the smarties. And he's not tough enough to do the work he needs to make his money square. Instead, he relies all on cultivating his perception. And that may have worked for him, but it's a shallow existence. Unlike Scrooge, Beeks isn't satisfied with who he is. Instead, he has to sustain himself with the gratification of others. He may be one of the richest birds in Duckburg, but it's clear that he thinks that without the followers, likes, and retweets of social media, that's just not good enough. And although that's a really simple overview of a new character, it's something I really like. It sets him up as an opposite to Scrooge in a way that Glumgold isn't, and explores that personality in a new way. So far, Mark Beeks isn't really a villain, and I'm kind of wondering how they're going to integrate him into the story in the future. But I like him as another opposite to Scrooge. Much like how Scrooge kind of resents Gladstone Gander for not working hard for his money, he'll easily resent Mark Beeks for not being honest or working in fair play for not making his money square. And I'm excited to see how they play off each other in the future. That's it for this episode, guys. And man, that got a little bit deeper than I expected. I mean, I have so many questions about Glumgold's removable beard. What's up with that? Let me know what you think in the comments, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and all that if you enjoyed this one. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and take it easy, internet.